Hey there, here we have John and Peter playing on a seesaw. Now let's say for some reason the seesaw becomes balanced. Given that John is 25 kilograms and is sitting 2 meters from the pivot, while Peter is 20 kg, how far from the pivot is Peter sitting? Now to find out, stay tuned. Welcome to Rise Up Namobia. My name is Matyanata aka the resistor of bad and the lover of good. Hashtag dark and lovely underscore. Walk by faith and not by sight. So, before we look at our initial question, I want us to look at this formula, which is moment equals to force multiplied by distance. The second thing that I would like us to look at is that force is always measured in newtons, while distance is measured in meters okay let's quickly see how to use this formula calculate the moment of John so where do we start we start with the formula which is moment equals to force multiplied by distance now ask yourself are we given the force here are we given John's force no we don't have his force but we are given his mass which is 25 kilograms so we can use this mass to calculate his force. Now how do we calculate his force? We can do that by using this formula. Which is force equals to mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength which is 10 newtons per kilogram. So when you multiply his mass which is 25 kilogram by 10 newtons per kilogram you get 250 newtons. Okay? Now we multiply that 250 newton by the distance which is sitting from the pivot so it's 2 meters now 250 multiplied by 2 will give us 500 so what unit do we use? the unit for moment is nm okay which is newton meter so that's your final answer now when we look at our scenario here from the pivot, we have the left hand side where John is sitting, and then we have the right hand side where Peter is sitting. So to solve for the distance where Peter is sitting or where Peter is sitting from the pivot, we use the same formula, except this time we write it as force multiplied by distance for John, which is on the left hand side of the pivot. Think of the equal sign as the pivot. And then another force multiplied by distance for Peter, which is on the right hand side of the pivot. Now not to get confused between these two equations, we label them. The first one with a 1 and then the second one with a 2. Okay? Now what are we looking for? Are we looking for John's force or are we looking for John's distance? No. We are looking for Peter's distance which means it's this one on the right hand side of the pivot and then it's d2 now knowing that we are looking for d2 what we do is you make that d2 subject of the formula now if you don't know how to make a certain letter subject of the formula i'll be leaving another link down below in the description that you can go follow and watch first okay so if you are to make this d2 subject of the formula we'll check whatever is with it and then we'll cancel it out so here we have d2 is multiplied by f2 so we have to get rid of this f2 how do we get rid of it because they are multiplied we can cancel it out by division okay so we divide both sides by this f2 now on the right hand side because the f2 is also on top as a numerator and in the denominator it will cancel out and then you are left with d2 equals to F1 multiplied by D1 divided by F2. So let's just rearrange this formula quickly and put the D2 on the left hand side. Now when you have this formula, from here it's simple. You just substitute your figures into the formula. So what is F1? Our force 1 is a John. So 250 is our force 1. How do I get 250? 
I get it by multiplying his mass, which is 25 kilograms, by 10. We get 215 newtons. Okay? So what is our D1? Our D1 is this distance. Okay? So it's 2 meters. So we multiply that by 2 meters. Now what is our F2? Remember F2 now, it's on this side of the pivot. So it's Peter's force. So what is Peter's force? It will be 200 newtons. Okay? So from here, 250 multiplied by 2 will give you 500. Divided by 200 will give you 2.5. Okay? Now what unit will we use? Because there is an N on top and there is also an N at the bottom, it will cancel out. And you are left with what unit? With the M. And that's the unit you use. And it actually makes sense because if that is the, the unit that is left, it's M for meters and we are asked for the what? For the distance. So distance is measured in meters. So that is the correct answer. Okay? So, I want you to try out this question that says, what is John's mess? Okay? So I'll give you 10 seconds. And if 10 seconds are too few, feel free to pause the video. Okay, so how do we find John's mass? We actually use the same formula. Okay? And then we label them not to get confused. Now from here, we ask ourselves, what is being asked? It's John mess or John's mess. Now, which side of the seesaw is John sitting? John is sitting on the left hand side, which means we are going to be using this formula on the left hand side. Now, since we are looking for his mass, we know that mass is not related to distance, but it is related to force. Okay? So, let's solve for his force first. Now, when we solve for his force, we'll need to get rid of the D1. So, how do we get rid of this D1? By making F1 the subject of the formula. And again, I'll re-emphasize to say, if you don't know how to make a certain letter subject of the formula, check out the link down below in the description. Okay? So we'll divide both sides by D1, which will cancel out the D1 on the left hand side. So we are left with F1 equals to F2 multiplied by D2 divided by D1. So from here, we substitute our figures into our equation. What is our F2? Our F2 is the force of Peter. So we are already given that it's 200 newtons. So we write the 200 newtons there. Now what is our D2? Let's check. Our D2 is 2.5 meters. So we write multiplied by 2.5 meters. Now divided by what is our D1? Our D1 is here. Which is 200 centimeters. Now I want you to be careful here. Remember in the beginning I told you that the distance should always be in meters. Now, this is where most of the examiners confuse learners. Because they will give you 200 centimeters. And when you come and write your figures here, you just write 200 centimeters. So, you need to change this 200 to meters first. So, what is 200 centimeters when you change it to meters? It's 2 meters. Okay? From there, 200 multiplied by 2.5 divided by 2 will give you 250. What unit do you use? Because there is an M on top and also another M at the bottom, you cancel them out and then you are left with an N. So that will be your unit. And just like that, you have found your force. Now remember, this is not your final answer because this is 250 newtons. We need to find the mass. So you did not yet satisfy the question. So to find our mass from our force, we use this equation. Or formula. So force equals to mass multiplied by two, 10 newtons per kilogram. So how do we use this? We make M the subject of the formula. Okay? How do we do that? By dividing both sides by 10 newtons per kilogram to cancel out this one. And then we are left with mass equals to 
force divided by 10 newtons per kilogram okay now knowing that our mass is equal to our force divided by 10 newtons per kilogram you need to ask yourself what is our force our force is this 250 newtons so we write our 250 newtons down and then we divide it by 10 newtons per kilogram so what is 250 divided by 10 you get 25 now what unit do we use because we have an N on top and another N at the bottom, we cancel it out and we are left with kg. So it's 25 kg, which is our final answer. And it actually makes sense because 25, when you have a unit as kg, kg is a unit for mass. Okay? So now you have satisfied the question. Okay? Did you find this video helpful? If yes, do give us a huge thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. For more videos like this one and do turn on that notification button not to miss the next upload share with friends family and classmates and remember together we rise to higher heights apart we all stay behind cheers